Hi, welcome to this second chapter. We are going to talk about applications for transport infrastructure monitoring. As always, you have the sales department email and the Libellium website. In this slide, you can see the index we are going to follow in this second chapter. In first place, we are going to talk about pollution points location. Secondly, noise maps. And then, weather conditions, liquid presence over pavements, IC roads prediction, track monitoring, vehicle presence, and finally, vehicle and pedestrian detection. From Libellium, we provide an encapsulated line called Plug and Sense. This line consists of a robust waterproof enclosure with a specific external sockets to connect the sensors, the solar panel, the antenna, and even the USB cable in order to reprogram the node. It has been especially designed to be scalable, easy to deploy and maintained. Sensor proofs can easily be attached by just screwing them to the bottom sockets. This allows you to add new capabilities to existing networks in just some minutes. There are nine different encapsulated boxes which permit to combine several sensors. Thus, the Black and Sense boxes and Meslum integrate the wireless sensor network. In this slide, we are going to see the first application. It consists of the location of polluting points. For that purpose, we have the Smart Environment Line. That includes different sensors like the carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and so on. As you see, the deployment of these boxes would permit us to know the polluting points in the city due to the traffic. This is one of the most concerning problems in the modern cities in the last few decades. Now we are going to see the second application about the noise maps. The Smart Cities line includes an acoustic decibel sensor that permits to know the noise in a specific point. This will permit to study the life quality in places close to transport routes. Similarly to the previous case, the deployment of these boxes with microphones will permit us to know the noisy points in the city. In this image, you can see a noise map example. In this map, you can see different noise levels depending on the decibels measured in each street. Now, we go to the third application, about weather monitoring at risky points. The Smart Agriculture line includes a low-cost weather station with pluviometer sensor, vein sensor, anemometer sensor, and finally, temperature and humidity sensor. As you see, this weather station permits to know some relevant values, like the rainfall, the temperature and humidity, and the wind speed and direction. This allows to point out the meteorological state of the roads in real time, alerting drivers of such incidents and indicating them to take the necessary precautions. Now we are going to move to the next application about the liquid presence over the pavement. For that purpose we have the smart security line that includes the liquid presence sensor. This sensor permits to control conflictive points due to floods. For example, in this video we can see a conflictive point at the exit of the tunnel due to the rainfall. We can appreciate how every vehicle have difficulties when they try to stop. Therefore, the poor condition of the road could be marked properly and try to avoid this type of accidents. Another possible application is the icy road prediction. From Libellium we provide different lines such as Smart Agriculture, Smart Ambient and Smart Security which include a humidity and temperature sensor which can be used for ice generation prediction. The advantages of this application are the announcement of these road hazards, the setup of security actions to prevent accidents and so on. A new different application is the structural crack monitoring, such as bridges, tunnels, etc. The Smart Cities line includes a linear displacement sensor to control these structural cracks. This sensor and others, like vibration sensors, 
would permit the monitorization of all the structures, although it could be useful for the monitorization of the building process of new structures. Now we go to the vehicle detection application. For that we have the smart parking line with a magnetic field sensor that permits the vehicle detection for parking slots and also the traffic jam detection. As you see, the smart parking box is installed on the pavement surface. This enclosure complies some regulations to ensure the isolation of the product from the humidity. Besides, the material is being designed so as not to cause communication interferences. These pictures explain the basic working process of the smart parking application. The wasmuts are buried on the surface and they communicate to Meshlium. When a vehicle stays over the parking sensor, the information is transmitted through the network to Meshlium. And finally, Meshlium sends the information over the internet. In the following video, we can see all the deployment process of the smart parking nodes. In first place, a hole is dug on the surface. Then the node is allocated inside the hole and finally, the hole is sealed in order to avoid humidity. Once the application is working, when a car is parked over the magnetic field sensor, the vehicle is detected. And finally, we are going to see the vehicle and pedestrian detection. For that, we are going to use the Meslium scanner with the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi cards and thus, it will be possible to perform an estimation of the traffic and pedestrian flow. Finally, it is Meslium, the device which sends all the information over the Internet. In this video, we are going to see how to use both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanners. Regarding the Wi-Fi scanner, we have labels for the internal and external databases. In the internal database, we have the name of the database, the name of the table, the IP address, the port, the user, and the password. We can choose the scanning period in seconds, and also we can select the number of insertions we want to show. Here we have different columns for the insertion ID, the timestamp, the device's MAC address, the access point name, and the last columns are related to the signal quality and the vendor ID. Now we pay attention to the timestamp of the last insertion. If we show more data, we are able to see more scanned devices. Besides, we have the possibility to synchronize with an external database and then transmit all this information. Now we go to the Bluetooth label. As you see, this plugin is almost the same. In the local database, we have the database name, the table, the IP address, the port, the user and the password. Similarly, we can select the scanning period and we have the button so as to show the database insertions. So, we have the following columns. The insertion ID. The insertions timestamp. The device's MAC address. The device's ID. And finally, we have the signal quality, the class of device and the vendor ID. Now, we pay attention to the last timestamp again. We press the Show Data button and then we find out new Bluetooth devices inside our local database.